The report says report, at the turn of the year, the, the growth was sluggish. There's a lot of concern about the German economy. Let's talk about that first. You, at the same time, said we should look through that. In the medium term, the longer term, we should not be concerned. We heard from our chairman of our central bank back in the United States yesterday testifying, Mr. Powell, and he's very concerned about worldwide growth, and particularly Germany. Is he overly concerned? Would you advise him not to be so worried? Now, what I said is that we are in the midst of revising uh, our forecast. And what we've seen in the past is a slowdown of growth uh, starting at around uh, the second half of last year. And uh, this soft patch is somehow more protracted than we initially thought. It's linked to a couple of factors. Global uh, demand is one of them, uh, but also some idiosyncratic factors that are specific to Germany and that are f related, for instance, to the automotive industry and very likely to be uh, overcome soon or even have been uh, overcome in the recent past. So for us, what is key is that the key factors that are driving growth in Germany are still intact, and that is cheap financing conditions for one, but also a buoyant labor market and very dynamic wage growth that should betray uh, domestic demand. When you talk about the, the trade issues with respect to Germany in particular, because you're such a significant exporting country, how much of that is external to the European Union? How much of it's internal? Because we've heard reports that it's not just trade with China or trade with the United States, but actually internally within the Euro, European area that the trade is down. Is that correct? Well, I think the main point for our forecast is that they are currently surrounded by a very high degree of uncertainty and part of that is related uh, to the looming trade conflicts. Um, so uh, what we are seeing is, of course, there are some factors that are related to the EU as such, like Brexit, like some political uh, debates within uh, the euro area. But then we have this uh, looming trade conflict, which is, of course, affecting uh, uh, or potentially affecting uh, the very open German economy uh, more, than, more than others. On contrast, what we don't see is that there is already uh, a palpable effect of this high uncertainty on, for instance, investment. This is where you should see it first. Uh, Jens, under what condition would you support Teltros? Well, Teltros are a monetary policy instrument, so the question is to what extent uh, the current e economic data is affecting the medium-term uh, inflation outlook. And if uh, the answer to that is yes, then we have to discuss by what monetary policy or by which monetary policy instrument to respond. And of course, the Teltros are one element of uh, this discussion. But again, the key point is here the effect on the medium-term inflation outlook. But, but part of the issue is Our that... definition of price stability. A part of the issue, precise. though, is that w wages have been going up but yet the break-evens and the inflation expectations have not. If you can't resolve that, don't you have to resort to, in some ways, looser monetary policy, even if it's pushing back a rate hike or new Teltros? Uh, what counts for us is the medium-term inflation outlook. And in all our forecasts, and well, in the previous round, uh, again, we are in the process of uh, revising them. The baseline scenario was one of a uh, um, domestic price pressure that was picking up over the projection horizon. And this is still, for me, the most likely uh, scenario. And what you see is that in those countries where the labor market is strong, wages are also growing stronger. Also, by historical comparison, wage growth in Germany is quite, uh, quite robust. So you see a reaction uh, of uh, wages to uh, the cyclical uh, situation and the high capacity utilization. So this is the first the first step, uh, so to speak, in, in that transmission process. Uh, Mr. Feynman, uh, you talked about the uncertainty because of trade in Germany and Europe more broadly. What about with respect to rates? Uh, because we have heard in the past Mario Draghi say that they will not be raising before the end of the summer. There's a lot of thought in the marketplace that maybe that means September, something like that. Now it's thought that would be later. Would it be helpful to business, the economy overall, to give clear guidance about when we can expect rates to go up from the ECB? I do believe that the forward guidance is working as it should, uh, because markets have already reacted to the softening economic data by postponing their expectation of a lift-off. So in a sense, uh, this is sort of, auto, of an autopilot. 
uh, we told markets that uh, uh, um, through the summer we will not raise rates or uh, longer if, uh, if needed and they fully understood the message. And that suggests that, in fact, at this point, it probably is needed, if I understand what you're saying correctly, that given the softening economic data, it's not through the summer, it's probably later than that. I mean, the market reaction is uh, rather plausible uh, to me. I don't comment, uh, on, I don't take a judgment on their exact uh, uh, size, but, but I think uh, they're reacting to economic data and in that sense, kind of anticipating also a monetary policy debate.